the show where I celebrate my love of all things TV and pray that it never leaves me. <laughs> Don't leave me, TV. <laughs> I'm having your baby. <laughs> I love television. It's taught me everything I know. When I'm watching Casualty, I like to add a bit of realism by waiting for six hours on a plastic chair before I watch it. <laughs> on MasterChef, Greg Wallace really knows a thing or two about ingredients. People are constantly trying to dip soldiers in his head. <laughs> and they always say cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Oh, really? Try making a roast dinner for eight people with your mother-in-law standing over your shoulder saying, Oh, you make gravy like that, do you? <laughs> talking about some of my favorite TV programs makeover shows you know like property or going through people's wardrobes I'd like to see a property show where they decorate your house in a really disgusting way just for a laugh <laughs> whatever happened to changing rooms <laughs> I'm not very domesticated and a bit of a hoarder I read that the secret to creating the illusion of space is decluttering I might just get rid of the oven <laughs> Anything you haven't touched in the last six months, dump it. Or him, as the case may be. <laughs> when I was clearing out my kitchen cupboards, I found a Christmas pudding from 1988. <laughs> it's fine with a bit of custard on. <laughs> I've only ever made one cake, and it was for my ex-husband. That's not the reason that he's ex, <laughs> It's probably one of the reasons. Um, he said, that'll be lovely with a bit of custard on. When people offer to put custard on something, it's never a compliment, is it? <laughs> Imagine the first night in bed with a new partner and he looks at you, who Jimmy watch it and says, that'd be lovely with a bit of custard. <laughs> but why is that then? It's a bit dry. <laughs> and whose fault's that? <laughs> I found a tin of Marafat peas that I'd won in a raffle in 1995. <laughs> I was clearly keeping them for Armageddon. <laughs> I mean, the real thing. I don't mean just sitting down to watch a Bruce Willis film. <laughs> thinking, you know what would go perfect with it? <laughs> really old Marafat peas. <laughs> I've also got a pineapple cutter. It produces pineapple rings and a big sort of pineapple dildo. <laughs> or Louis Spence, as he's known. <laughs> much these days. I spend a lot of time in hotel rooms on tour and all I really want when I get in is a bath with me book and a cup of tea. I stayed in a hotel in Bristol and when I got into my room there was only a shower. So I rang down and that's rang with the telephone. I didn't run down. <laughs> Bloody idiot. <laughs> I rang down and said is there any chance I could swap to a room with a bath? The fella said there are no baths in this building but there is an apple muck in every room. <laughs> There's a bath up. <laughs> I'm not really interested. So I did what you'd all do if you were in a hotel room with time on your hands. I put the glass over the plug hole and thought, well, I'll see how high I can get the shower then. <laughs> I got it about a foot high. <laughs> But my book was ruined and my tea just tasted of warm water. <laughs> I live in a small flat and I'm thinking of moving at the moment. I viewed a flat once that had windows painted on the living room wall. Painted on? I didn't know they had wildebeest in Gateshead. <laughs> well, maybe it's on a Saturday night. <laughs> That's not going to fool you, though, is it? It's like being lonely and painting a person on the wall. <laughs> Or being horny and having a cardboard cut out of Dermot O'Leary. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> I went to see one place that the estate agent described as a single man's flat, lacking a woman's touch, that's what they said. The living room had a telly and computer pulled really close to an armchair with a pair of underpants and a bag underneath. <laughs> Tron 3000! <laughs> Lacking a woman's touch, what the flat of the order! <laughs> you 
you know, what I need is an expert off the telly to help me through all things domestic. She's touched up more old wrecks than Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome star of Beanie's Restoration Nightmare, Sarah Beanie. <laughs> for coming on the show. Now, there's not much you don't know about property makeovers. Let's have a little look at you in action. Graham and Sarah decide to vent their frustration by unblocking the original alcove. It's very therapeutic smashing a wall down, I have to say. about property advice that men find so sexy? I, you know, I think they think I'm really, really strict. And I think that's <laughs> kind of good. <laughs> I think they think I'm going to say, you, you need to get your drill out and you need to get your hammer out and you need to do as you're told. And you quite rightly just save that for your husband, don't you? <laughs> well, let's have a look at the house. Look at that. Wow. Does it not just feel a little bit like you're living in Downton Abbey? Do you ever, like, shout for people to bring your biscuits? And I that? do. <laughs> it's got 97 rooms. Yeah. How many of those are toilets? I'm a little bit obsessed with toilets, actually, cos I like them to not look like... You've got a photo of one of your toilets. See, that, to me, just looks like a... <laughs> That's the thing. plan. But, yeah, but is that a good plan? Cos you can't run over that with a flashlight. You'd have to get your pledge out for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> A, you've got it looks really grand and then you've got a little bin in the corner with what looks like a Sainsbury's bag. Yeah, that's that's a... <laughs> that is a bad look, <laughs> People ask obviously ask you advice a lot. Why don't people ever ask you the proper questions like should I move in with my boyfriend even though my flat's better? Would you ever do actually? Did you? Because I also have a date I have a property website and I have a dating website. So you can which combine is the two magic. Yeah, because I'm thinking, now that we've got a property website you can buy and sell houses and a dating website where you can meet someone and we've got a wedding venue, which is dry, all I need to do is funerals and I've pretty much cleaned up everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe you could cast your expert eye over some of these pictures we found on property websites. Uh, have a look at this one, advertising a flat in a converted church. <laughs> uh... Jeremy Clarkson was moving, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and have a look at this. We've got another one. Let's have a look at the other one. I don't think... Oh, yeah, people have spotted it. People have spotted it. There's a quick glance out of the window. Now, you might not be able to spot it so it comes. Anybody spotted it? Oh, yeah. Have a look in the mirror. <laughs> um, but to be fair... To be fair, at least we know the heating's working all right. <laughs> now, you've had quite a tough time on Restoration Nightmares. You're still renovating, aren't you? Pretty much finished the house now. Which We've is... actually got a shot of one of the finished rooms. Ooh. So let's have a look at that. Ooh, that's that's finished, is it? <laughs> well, just I mean, if I, if you don't mind, um, like at the picture on the left hand side, you've got the string show, and my dad always used to do it straight across the back, really tight, so you couldn't see the string. It's quite untidy that. And you've got you've got like half a table popping up. I'm assuming the other half's in the other room, is it? I don't know what's on your telly on the right-hand side, but it um, <laughs> looks like a very old programme. <laughs> Basically, if I designed this, this is how it would look. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we've got a hot tub there, we've got an iron board already up, just for ease. Um, <laughs> and if you can see on the right-hand side, uh, out the window there, we've, we've got the dogs for you. And... <laughs> his cock out on the left. Actually, you know, you know, I wasn't thinking that we'd be able to sell the house before, but now I'm thinking, You're we need you in. 
So that is property sorted. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Sarah Beanie. Thank you. Now, I watch Cash in the Attic, but wouldn't want them rummaging around at mine. I don't have an attic, just a spare room with a Christmas tree still fully decorated. <laughs> Boxes of knackered vibrators. <laughs> it's where sex goes to die. <laughs> like Sex Toy Story 4. <laughs> and all the vibrators just chat and say, no, she loved me the most. <laughs> it's awkward when people buy you things for your flat, isn't it? Especially when it's your partner. I had flu last year and my boyfriend said he was going to get me a present to cheer me up. How lovely quite easy to cheer up. I like flowers and chocolates. My favourite flowers are daffodils, which were in season at the time and were everywhere in buckets for a pound. <laughs> Chocolate-wise, I'm quite happy with a Twix or a Twirl, so you talk, and one pound sixty, and I'm champion. <laughs> but he chose to disregard that relevant information and came home with something that he thought was entirely appropriate, which was a Mr Potato Head. <laughs> I still don't really know why. <laughs> when I opened it, I wanted to rearrange his bloody face. <laughs> People are responding to the recession in different ways. I quite fancy joining the W.Y. In my head, it's just sewing badly while drinking tea with women in their 50s. But I've heard it's quite strict, especially the competitions. My friend's mum once made a Victoria sponge in a category where she was the only entrant. She wasn't even placed. <laughs> Numbers of men have taken up knitting recently. Apparently, the reason they like it so much is the repetition of movement. <laughs> in these times of austerity, what I need is an expert to teach us how we can pull our horns in. So, coming to us direct from the City of London, please welcome BBC business editor Robert Preston. <laughs> Hello, Robert. Thank you very much for joining us. Great pleasure, Sarah. Um, you're the man who broke the news of the financial crash to the nation, uh, secured numerous groundbreaking scoops. But what I really want to know is, are you really 51? <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay well, looking so young, Flower? I, I'm told there's a painting in the attic somewhere, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sure we've all introduced our own sort of austerity measures at home, pulling our horns in, you know, buying own brand Jaffa cakes, you know, <laughs> splitting the ply of the toilet roll so it lasts us twice as long. <laughs> Have you placed any austerity measures at home? Oh, blimey. Uh... <laughs> I'll tell you what I have started doing. I have started to make my own bread. It is much, much cheaper than bought bread and so much nicer. Do you use a bread maker? I do use a bread maker. Oh, was the bread maker very expensive? <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to get onto that. And the answer is, <laughs> and the answer is as a business editor, <laughs> I have calculated the cost of each loaf, taking into account the depreciation of the bread maker. <laughs> I can tell you, it's still very good value. I bet you've even done a spreadsheet, haven't you, Flower? Well, I can send you it. Would you like to see it? No. <laughs> the national debt, we owe £1.1 trillion. That's nearly £16,000 per person. Who's been spending all of that? 